Welcome back. A cool thing about interviewing guests is their connection to others in the world of baseball. It's extra cool when these new connections and new guests happen to be involved with my favorite team. I am Grayson Knight, and this is Baseball Podcast Our Fun. Many of the listeners know that I love the Tampa Bay Rays. I've had four or five other players from the Rays organization on the show, including relief pitcher Colin Poche and former Ray Brett Phillips. After speaking with Quincy Newporty recently, he mentioned someone else on the Rays uh, might be interested. And here we are. Taylor Walls is a middle infielder for the Tampa Bay Rays. And last year, while getting his most playing time yet in the majors, he had an impressive season. And he only looks to get better in 2023. So let's get to it. Taylor Walls, thank you for coming on the show. How are you? Good, Grayson. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, yeah. Quincy asked me, reached out, uh, you know, maybe a week or two ago, and asked if I'd be interested. And um, after seeing, you know, Brett Phillips and a couple of those guys doing, I'm like, yeah, for sure. You're a race fan. Um, it's I've, I've watched a couple of the the recent podcasts you've done. You're doing great work. So uh, yeah, I'm proud to be here. Thanks for having me. So uh, right out of the gate, can you help me settle the debate? Uh, my family always wants to know how do you pronounce where you're from? Is it Cordell or Cordell, Georgia? uh i say cordial so is but that is that like what, what runs say. in the family yeah i mean i don't everybody from there says cordial um most of the people from out of town are not from there that like ask me like are, where are you from or are you from here they always say cordial so uh i don't know it's kind of like i mean if you say cordial i know what you're saying but if you ask anyone from that area it'd be cordial Mm-hmm. My mom and dad are hopefully happy now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Who won that? Mm-hmm. Who won that one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I I I, pron- I pronounce it uh, cordial. Okay. Yeah. There you so, go. You're right. Yeah, we're kind of the same. Um. Well, thanks for coming on here. Uh, this is a big treat for me. Uh, you and Quincy Newport were at FSU together. So, what what was it like being teammates with him? Oh man, Quincy's the best. He's uh. I guess always high energy. You never know what you're going to get with him, but it's always going to be something good. Um, I mean, it, I, I remember I have so many memories of Quincy um, on and off the field, but man, as a teammate, I, I, the one memory that I flash back to is we were playing UF in a um, or University of Florida in a uh, midweek game, and we were at home. We always play him on the road early in the season. We go to a neutral site in Jacksonville in the middle of the season, and then we come to our place in Tallahassee the last game. And I'll never forget, we were like extra innings. He comes up to the bat, and I'm in the dugout watching from the top step, and he hits, a, I mean, an absolute bomb that lands on, like, the equipment building in left center field and oh. just absolutely pimps the crap out of it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Quincy's awesome. Great teammate, great guy, full of energy, full of love, always happy, joking around. He's he's a great – he's a great Um. Guy. So, when we were interviewing him, uh, he said that was his favorite baseball moment. But uh, also – I don't want to like end this interview quick because um we're actually Gators. So oh, yeah, I know, right? I, mm-hmm. Yep, your dad mentioned that. So uh we have a little work to do, but mm-hmm. that's pretty funny though that his favorite moment is is walking it off against you guys. Yeah. Um. So uh, what do you think your favorite moment is against the Gators? Ooh, the Gators. I don't know, man. I, they always played me tough. Um, I never really had a lot of great moments against UF. I mean, I I think I hit maybe one homer against UF. So I mean I'd probably say that, but they they pretty much dominated us when when out my three years there. We uh I think they won probably every like season series that we played those three years and we went to their supers twice and they beat us both times. So I don't really have any great memories against UF, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, so you grew up in Southern Georgia. Um, and how did you get started in baseball? Um, I, I don't know, man. Honestly, I have, I think I was just kind of very involved in multiple sports. So, uh, I think it was just an activity, something for me to go outside and do. My dad played a lot of slow pitch softball kind of when I was growing up. So I think like that was very similar. Um, and then a lot of the kids from the area that I was friend with friends with also played baseball. So I grew up playing basketball or not basketball, football and baseball. And then as I started getting towards like middle school, um, I started transitioning from football to basketball. So basketball and baseball are my two sports and baseball was just a sport from a very young age that I was always really good, really good at. Um, I just always played it. We put, ended up having my parents had really good family friends and, and friends that would travel that had kids my age that 
we would all go play travel tournaments together. So I think that bondage of my friend, my parents, friends, and also friends of mine, and we were all doing something similar. I think we just gravitated to that and played a lot on the weekends and just uh, had fun doing it. So I think that's kind of where it started. Um, so were you in love with the game right away or did it take some time? No, I definitely loved the game right away. Um, I think the, just like, like I said, like the friendships and just being able to be with your friends on the weekend and play was probably the, the part I enjoyed the most about it when I was younger. Um, and then I started developing and becoming a pretty good player. And so it became a lot more fun. You know, everything's more fun when you're doing well. So, uh, that kind of, I think that kind of kickstarted it too. And, uh, I actually grew really tired of baseball there around like, I don't know, I'd say like 11 to like 13, 14. I like kind of got to the point to where like I would not want to play hardly at all. I was just worn out. And um, and that's kind of when I started picking up basketball. And I think that helped a lot playing a sport that I had never played and were, wasn't very good at. It gave me it gave my mind a break from baseball and gave me a chance to try to gravitate and become really good at something that I'd never played before. And then once taking that step back, taking that breather back away from baseball, it gave me the time to kind of like reset, regather, kind of like regain the passion for it and not to be just completely like tired and worn out from it. So I'm actually starting a winter ball basketball this um, winter. There we go. Yeah. And um, I'm also not that good of it, um, but it's just, I, I guess, like a warm up for next season for baseball. The The best advice I could give to any kid like around your age or even a little younger is to play basketball regardless of if you've ever played in your entire life play basketball it's going to make you your hand eye coordination significantly better your determination and desire and everything like mentally is going to be better because you're going to struggle at first and you're not going to be very good and then you're going to you have to run jump your your agility is going to improve tremendously because you're going to from defensive moving side to side you're reacting to something that you're not you have no clue of which direction it's going to go so I think basketball especially I don't know what position you play baseball wise infield or outfield but as uh, infield I mean really any position like you're reacting to something that you have no clue of what direction is coming you don't know if it's going to be left right slow in front of you fast to where you have to retreat so it's just very it's very instinctively based and just reaction based and I think that there's no better training besides maybe tennis that you could get to prepare you for baseball than basketball. So uh, I play some outfield, and I'm I'm I could I could I consider myself a pretty fast kid like you. Um. So speaking of that, uh, in in your college days, you were known as a really speedy guy. Uh, when you were a freshman, you had seven bases, uh, seven stolen bases. But when you were a sophomore, you doubled that. Um. So, but I kind of want to get faster. So, what advice do you have? Um, for players like me looking to get faster? Get in the gym. Um, it doesn't – when I say get in the gym, it doesn't matter uh, really how much weight you're trying – like it's not necessarily weightlifting, um, but you got to get in the gym. You got to get stronger. You can get stronger without trying to squat 200 pounds or 250 pounds. Go in there and just try to get the, the center of your body strong, your, your core strong. Your hip flexors strong, your adductors, like your, your the side of your leg strong, your glutes strong, your hamstrings. That is all. That's where all power is from. Speed, speed is power. It's how strong you are and how fast you can move that. And the power is how fast you can move that strength. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if if you're a fast guy, like genetically and maybe just God given, you're probably fast already. But you're gonna start hitting a certain age to where if you don't have the strength to match that speed injury is going to start happening. So the gym is always good, man. It, it prevents injury. It allows you to get faster as well. So that is the, that's the first step and the last step to getting faster. Honestly. I mean, you can work, you, you can try, there's small things you can go to for running mechanics, like to try to really fine tune how you run, like, you know, like the, the, the detailed running mechanics behind it. And maybe you pick up a, a, a little bit of speed there, but, in a sport like baseball where you're not you're never running straight maybe in the outfield maybe if you get a ball in the gap you're going to take it try to take as straight of a line as you can to catch it but most of the time your route's never exactly perfect right you're going to be zigzagging a little bit around the bases you're in a constant left turn like it, uh, if you're on the bases and you react to a ball in the dirt you're you're maybe you go maybe you don't it's very, it's very agile and very lateral so i mean 
just try to just be explosive, get in the weight room, get stronger, and just try to stay injury preventive too. So we actually have a special guest here who is a big Florida State University fan and a big fan of you, Taylor. And he actually has some a, a few questions for you. Welcome, Liam. How are you? Well, I'm good, Grayson. How about you? I'm good. Um, ask some questions. All right. <laughs> What's up, Liam? Hi, Taylor. Um, so a couple questions I have for you are: uh, What does your off-season training schedule look like, or progression look like from the end of one season till you start spring training again? Um, good. Qu- that's a very good question, actually. I think that's probably one of the most important things as a professional athlete is what what and when do you start doing things in the off-season. Um, and I think it's probably a little different for everyone. For me personally, I like to get in the weight room right away. I like to stay in the weight room. Um, there's no worse feeling than coming home, sitting on your butt for two, three weeks, and then getting back in the, the gym that next week and feeling like you've lost half of what you had. So uh, that's the first thing. I put the bat down, put the glove down, don't throw a ball for probably a month and a half, two months. And uh, I really just get after it in the weight room. I try to regain my strength. A long 160-game season takes a lot of strength away. You, uh, you don't work out as much as you'd like to. You miss a lot of meals that you wouldn't like to. You're dehydrated a lot. Um, and you're playing every day. So you lose a lot of that muscle that you build in the offseason. So going into the next offseason, that's very important to get that strength back. Um, and then from getting that strength back, I think from there it's starting to clean up like movement patterns. Um, trying to fit, figure out like, okay, what did I do bad last season or what can I improve on? What's the smartest way to go about this? And how can I start incorporating that in my work in the gym, in the weight room? And uh, start training those patterns the right way. If it's a certain thing, a certain movement in your swing, if it's a certain thing that's constraining you from getting a certain balls in the infield, the outfield, or running bases, like try to find – what area in the gym translates like almost exactly equal to that in in the baseball game. So uh, that's really, that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, I picked the bat up early and started swinging a little earlier this off season than normal, normal. um, Normally I may swing once a week, once every two weeks up until around the holidays, like a little after Christmas. And then I start really ramping up, start hitting three to five times a week, sometimes on the weekend. Um, But now I've started hitting, probably four or five times a week already. Um, I have a lot of stuff with my swing. I'm trying to clean up. I'm trying to get a lot more efficient, some angles a lot better to be able to hit certain pitches that I struggled with last year. So that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm, uh, I'm just, I just started my throwing program about a week ago. I just took some picks off the machine today for the first time. I've been hitting for maybe two, three weeks, maybe four now, and uh, I've been in the weight room. So that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, cool. Um, so another question I have is, uh, what is your favorite memory from your time as a null? Hmm. I definitely think going to, going to Omaha has to be. Um, I mean, it, that's probably that's more of a, a bigger picture, I guess, memory. That's not like a very dialed in moment. But uh, I just think like taking in those that four or five day period of being there, having that stadium fill out when we played LSU that night. Um, just everyone there, there for the same reason, everyone there for college baseball and just loving it. The atmosphere was great. Um, It was, I mean, it was cool just being there with, you know, nobody, but your, your family that traveled there and your teammates. It it was awesome. So, uh, and, and at the time I had a pretty good on on Bay Street going. So um, yeah, I mean, I think Omaha was hands down probably the greatest memory at FSU. Cool. That's really cool. What Um, was your, Go ahead, Grayson. No, 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 you can go. That's that's fine. Okay. What what was your favorite uh, memory from eleven? Well, there's plenty. Uh, let me see. I don't know, man. I mean, he gave you he gave you something good every day. I mean, he was as old as he was when we were there. He would when I would be taking ground balls, he'd be out at shortstop, down on his knees, showing showing me exactly how to how he wanted me to field it. And I feel like most coaches that would have been his age would have been sitting from the dugout telling the telling his son junior to go do it so uh I don't know I don't really have one specific memory from 11 I feel like he gave me so many but just being able to kind of be around a mind like that like I, there were times where I would sit in the dugout and he always sat in the same spot right there against the railing and I would all the players would usually sit on the railing across from it but you could hear him talking to himself not in a crazy way but he would be like just kind of calling out what pitch was coming next like here comes a slider in the dirt 
or here comes the fastball up. And just kind of hearing his mind and how smart he was and how well he knew the game, it was just like, man, dude, he's been called out the past 10 pitches to this guy. Like, why don't he just scream it out before the guy throws it and we'd all know what pitch was coming. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, – his baseball mind was great, man. It was it was fun playing for him, learned a lot for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Um, well, yeah, you're thank, welcome. thanks so much, Liam, um, for stopping in. Um, so next question I have, um, I'm a year and a half away from high school. Um, so what, um, advice do you have to, uh, for transitions between, um, middle school or travel ball into high school ball? Um, I, this is another, I think the getting stronger, uh, I mean, the, the, the competition from middle school to high school, I mean, it's a four-year difference and probably the the biggest four-year difference of any human being. I mean, you take a 14-year-old and compare him to an 18-year-old, and that's probably the biggest difference you're ever going to have, you know, physically. So I think, I mean, like maturity-wise, I think just go in there and just be yourself. Um, you know, everybody, people, 18-year-old, they're going to be living a completely different life than you are. But, uh, you know, just don't fall into the pressure of feeling like you have to fit in. Um, I think be yourself, know that you're not as old, you're not as mature, you're going to grow up, you're going to become who you want to be, but just being very comfortable in your own shoes. Uh, I think, uh, walking your line, paying attention to who do think who does things the right way and who doesn't, um, not, not allowing those people that may be cool in a certain scenario or situation to feel like they're pressuring you into doing something, you know, that you shouldn't do. And then find those guys that make the right decisions and do things that you know is right and try to gravitate towards them and hang around them. Um, that's from a just social standpoint. I think that's my answer there. And uh, baseball wise, I think it's just get stronger, get stronger. And same thing, gravitate towards the players that might not be the, they may not be the best players, but they're willing to work, right? They're willing to know where they're at. They know that the only way to get better is to, to put in the hours, to put in the reps, to take the swings, to take the ground balls, take the fly balls. You're not going to just miraculously get better by sitting at home or chit-chatting, going out on the weekends, doing nothing, right? It takes time. It takes work. It takes sacrifice. And then you, and you have to fall in love with that. If, you, if you're if you just sacrificing your time on the weekends to, to swing in the cage just to do it, to think you're going to be better than the next person, that's not enough. You got to fall in love with the fact that you're doing something that people aren't, right? You're in here, you're in here swinging when someone else isn't. You have to love – the hate for losing more than you love winning if you just love winning then you're not gonna you don't know how to embrace the losses you don't know how to embrace the struggles you have to embrace not being the best not being the the biggest the strongest uh be, not being the oldest not being the most mature you got to embrace that and, and use that as motivation to try to fuel yourself to become better than everyone else around you um so why did you choose uh fsu and what are the biggest adjustments you had to make while you were there um, I don't, FSU was actually the first school that offered me. Um, and it was cool because Florida State and the University of Georgia actually offered me on the same day within probably an hour from each other. Um, wow. I played one game. Yeah, it was, this is before the perfect game complex was built right around where you're, where you live at. And, uh, we used to play at East Cobb, which you're probably familiar with those fields too. Yeah. And, uh, we played a game. It was some high school. I can't remember the name of the high school, but, you know, Perfect Game rents out, used to rent out a lot of those high schools around there, and you would play a bunch of your C games and stuff at random high schools. And I had a good game. I had, like, I think I was, like, three for three, and I had, like, a line drive over shortstop from the left side, a line drive over second from the left side, and then a line drive over second from the right side. And I had a couple stolen base. I pretty much did, like, showcased everything I could do from both sides of the plate, stole some bases, had a few defensive plays. And then um, my summer coach was like, hey, FSU wants to call you. And so does Georgia. So they both called me. Well, growing up where I grew up, everyone's a Georgia fan. You live you live and die, you know, UGA, Georgia Bulldogs. So it was a no-brainer for me at first. I'm going to commit to Georgia. So I actually committed to Georgia. Um, I was committed there for over a year, year and a half maybe. Um, and then and a bunch of stuff. With their, I heard their coaches were going to get, you know, let go, get fired. A whole new staff was coming in. I had no clue who these this staff would be. Um, I heard they over recruited a lot, so there were no telling if the people they were offering scholarships for were really going to get them when the season came. So at that point, my summer coach kind of just told me, "Look, if you want to decommit and just open your options back up, that's probably that's probably a smart decision." And FSU still their offer is still there, so that's what I did. I opened the 
like I basically decommitted. The coaches understood. A week later, I committed to Florida State. And it was kind of a decision to where I was like, you know what, like this is almost like just being put into my lap, like don't go to Georgia, go to FSU. It's almost like everything that happened in that spin of time was just kind of like this is the direction I want you to go kind of thing. And so, um, yeah, that was it. And I also thought it was a, it was a better decision for me, like, career-wise. Like, if I wanted to really play after college at the time that I was going there, FSU was probably the best program for me to get into to try to develop me to be able to play professionally. And so that's kind of – that's pretty much what that decision-making was. And then the transition was pretty easy. I mean, we you come in a, a full summer before you start doing anything baseball-wise to kind of get accustomed to – being away from home, being with three other guys your age by yourself, trying to like mature and become an adult, learning how to, you know, just fend for yourself, make your own food, go get your own food, like do, you know, do everything you got to do for yourself, for yourself. You know, mom and dad do a lot for you when you're young. So it's like, how are you going to react when you're, when you're there alone? So uh, that's kind of it. And then just, you know, getting, getting a few friends, knowing the teammates, knowing the class that you're coming in with, we did do workouts during the summer. So getting accustomed to like being on a strict schedule and and trying to be, you know, some somewhat like uh, organized to the point to where like staying on top of everything. And so that's kind of the transition from there was easy. It's just kind of just trying to keep your head in the right spot and stay looking down the right path. Um, so what was it like when you got called up to the majors on uh, May 22nd of 2021? Uh, emotional. Um, yeah, I was, I was, I actually wasn't playing that day probably because I was getting called up, but never knew it. (laughs) And, uh, and I wasn't the, I was in Durham and they were, uh, going out, our our team was going out for BP and I was going to stay down because I was actually getting treatment on my leg. I stole a base the night before and I felt like my leg tightened up. So I was just like, I'm not going to go out there for BP. I'm not starting. And so I was down there getting treatment. Well, then they're like, hey, the coaches want to hold a meeting on the pitching mound or the, the mound. Like, they they need you out there. And I'm like, all right. So I go out there. And uh, when I go out there, I have no clue what's going on. Uh, actually, a minute, like, right as I'm going out there, somebody said, Willie just got traded. So I'm like, oh, crap. I didn't know who was getting called up. I knew it probably would be me or Wander. And so uh, we go out to around the pitcher's mound. And, and uh, Brady Williams, he's the was the manager there gave like a a big speech of like, you know, hard work. It takes a lot of hard work to get there. Kind of just this whole speech about it got me all emotional. And then uh, he said that I was getting caught up to the big leagues. And then I remember I shed a few tears. Teammates jumped on my back, started hugging me. Um, And it was great, man. I remember my family, my mom and dad actually had just gotten into town that day and was coming to the game that night. And uh, so it couldn't have happened with any better timing because I remember I called them. I went home. I didn't even stay for the game. I went home, packed our apartment. Me, my wife, my daughter at the time, my mom, we all flew there the next day, and my dad was there, and he drove all our stuff from our apartment down to St. Pete. So, uh, yeah, man, the timing of that was unreal, just having my family there to enjoy it with. It was great. Nice. But uh, your first game was actually in Dunedin, right? Yeah, well, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Dunedin. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said before the interview, we saw your first hit on TV, your first two hits, actually. First two mm-hmm. doubles of your major league career, which was like an incredible – was that an incredible moment for you? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I was so – I wouldn't say I was really nervous. It was just – I had so much adrenaline going through. It was like everything was just happening like so fast. It was almost like I was there, but like my body wasn't. It felt like – like it felt like – I mean, I was fully, you know, could do everything, but it just like – it felt like everything was just flying by. I was not like – still or calm like my heart was always just pounding full speed and so uh yeah that was fun it was um I remember as soon as I hit that ball lefty I felt like I was running so fast like I was like dude I don't know why I felt like I've never swung that hard in my life but and those were two of probably the hardest balls I think I've hit in the big leagues ever still so uh I don't know man adrenaline that's a crazy thing but that, that moment was special I had a lot of family there a lot of friends from from back home in Georgia that traveled to, to see that game. So that was a special moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, where do you keep the ball? Right here behind me, actually. Oh, if really? The, if the light doesn't glare too hard off of it. Yeah, that's – uh, so that's the bat I use. The bat's in the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. There I it can is. see it. The, the bat's in the bottom. That's the one I use. That's a picture of the double when I got fired up on second. And then both of those balls are the two hits, the one left – the left-handed double and the right-handed double. 
And then you have actually right above the picture, if you can see right there, um, is the plane ticket. So that's like the the plane ticket I got when I got called up. So that's, that's, pretty, awesome. that's a pretty yeah, that's a pretty cool piece. And then that's the uh that's the the lineup card up above where Cashy always signs it and gives it to you, like saves it in case a special moment or it was somebody's like, you know, debut game or something. So yeah, that's a uh, that's what I got from that game. So pretty mm-hmm. special. And obviously your jersey. Yeah, obviously the jersey, yep. Mm-hmm. Um so when when you got your first double, uh you said your heart was racing, right? Yeah, fired up. Mhm. And what when me and dad when me and my dad were watching it, we were we we didn't know who you were obviously, but we knew you were a rookie and we mm-hmm. knew that it was your it was your first hit, so we were like super excited. Um, because Willie Willie had gotten traded, and we 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 were we were not really sad, but we were kind of hoping that you or Franco w- would would come up, so the the team would be so much better. And it 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 was like a great moment for us. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, I'll I'll never forget that moment. That's something I'm always gonna hold on to. I'm glad that it could impact somebody like you too, and that it, it feels good knowing that other people were you know kind of rooting there along for me. So uh. Yeah, I, I I still remember running around the. I remember the swing, and then running around the bases. I rarely remember. It was like it wasn't a blackout moment, but it was as close to a blackout moment as it could get. I just remember getting a second, and not even really feeling like I had control of what I was doing. I was just so fired up. Um, Taylor, I'm always curious. Now that you're a major leaguer, uh, what is life like? Uh, how hard are you working on your skills during the off season? Uh, and what kind of breaks do you allow yourself? Um, that's a good question too. And I think this is different. I don't. I think I don't know. I, I I can answer this for myself, but I don't know about other people. But I work. I feel. Like I try to work harder every day. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's kind of like I felt like I've throughout my life I've set a pretty good standard for myself as far as work ethic. Um, so I feel like it, when it comes to work ethic, I'm you know below no one. So I feel like I try to always work. I'm always doing something. Um, working out early in the morning. I'm getting home, spending time with my family, and then it's right back to hitting and fielding for th- two, three hours. I get home as soon as I get, but like, it's like, as soon as I get bored, I never can sit still. My mind always has to gravitate to something. So I pick up my iPad, I look at video from my swing that day. I go in the garage in, a, in front of a mirror and hit phone balls off a tee in my garage and watch video in slow motion to see if there's certain stuff I could clean up. I go in the garage and do mobility. I'll go work out again. It's like, there's never, it's never a stop. It's like, there's always that question that pops up in my head. Like somebody's doing more than you. You have to always think that have this little guy on your shoulder to where every time you start to get any bit of complacency, that guy says that somebody's doing something. You're not somebody's doing more than you. This guy's working out twice a day. This guy's hitting 30 more balls. This guy's is more focused on the 30 balls he's hitting than you are. So there's all you can always get better. I mean, I think it's the, the question I want to ask myself when my career is, is done and over with is, was there anything that I could have done more of or took it taken more seriously that could have maybe allowed me to play a little bit longer or maybe allowed me to reach the potential that I didn't quite get to? And uh, I don't want to be able to look back and have any answer to that question. The only answer I want to that question is to be absolutely nothing. I want to be completely complacent, completely okay with everything I did, knowing that I did everything possible I could to become the best player that I could possibly be, to take every advantage of whatever it might be that I could and to put more hours in than anyone else. And so that's kind of my mentality. Every single day I wake up, now it's normal. Now I don't have to, like, that mentality took, years for me to build it took middle school high school um it took in high school when I would play basketball it would take me getting up at 5 a.m and going and working out at the gym going home showering hitting in the cage before school started going to school having basketball practice after school or a basketball game and then going home and, and going to sleep and doing it again the next day so it's like it took discipline it took it it took a building patterns and routine doing things when I'm when everyone else were were doing these things, I was you know making a note to go do what I knew I needed to do in order to separate myself from it, and then out of building that routine, now it's just natural. Now it's like I don't have to force or motivate myself to do that; it just comes. Um. So Taylor, before the last segment, do you have any questions for me? 
Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, let's see. So you're in what seventh grade? Yes. So you're seventh grade. Are are you gonna play on the middle school baseball team this year? So actually, our school doesn't have any sports. Really? Yeah. It, uh, no, no sports in our school because we're in all we're in all STEM school. So it's just it's mo- it's mostly a um, like a like a, um, an educational school. Okay, cool. So where where are you gonna play basketball at? Like somewhere um, in the city? Uh, yeah, like like somewhere for like a for like a camp for like. A, it's like, like a city like, league. Yeah, like a like a rec like a rec league. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had a rec league too. Yeah. So okay. So um. Are you playing – what baseball team do you play for if you're not playing organized for your school? Um, so, actually, me and Liam play on, in the same organization together. We play okay, on the really? – we play on Todd Green's D-backs. Okay, D-backs. Is y'all, season, or is y'all season still going now or are y'all done? No, we're, we're done. We're, we're going to start in January maybe. Good. How about um, – let's see. So, how old are you? Seventh grade, so what, you're probably 12? 13. I think – 13? Uh, Liam, you're 13, right? I'm 13. So have y'all started doing anything like weight wise, like workout wise? Mm-hmm. So I'm actually doing a strength and conditioning program, and that's where I met Quincy actually. Oh really? Yeah. Which one is it? Cressy? Is that what he does? Uh no, he does um un undiscovered undiscovered training. Oh okay, cool. Yeah, a good deal. Well, yeah, um, that's good, man. Keep it up. Try to take advantage of that. So try to do it as much as possible. Um. Make sure you eat. It's so important too. When when you're young, your metabolisms are so fast to where you forget to eat sometimes. It's almost like you get so busy playing, doing different things, and then you eat. Try to eat as much as possible. Get because that's the only way you're going to get stronger. You need to gain weight in order to, to turn you know fat into muscle, pretty much. So uh, eat, get the protein shakes in. You work out as much as possible, and uh, you know just just keep grinding. Find somebody like Liam. If y'all play on the same team, that's perfect. Are y'all Liam? Are you from the same area? Uh, I'm from Cumming, Georgia. I'm not sure where Grayson's not, from. Not though. that. It's not. It's not that far. It's not like far. Ten minutes. Like ten minutes. So, uh, where is it? Is it Dawsonville or Dawson? Is that just north of Cummings? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's where I actually have family that live there. We always uh take a trip up there around the holidays and go to the what is it? They have the like the mall of Georgia there, the the big yeah. outdoor mall that's there. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar there. But I actually, me and my wife got engaged at the square in Delanaga. Y'all oh, probably nice. know where that's at. Oh, really? mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that's like awesome. a there's like a pottery store right in the square. There's like a clay pottery store right there on the corner. And uh, yep, yeah, that's where I proposed to my wife at. So that's a pretty neat place. That's awesome. We love that spot. Nice. Um, so Taylor, we we've come. We're coming to my end of the interviews. So I do these not so rapid fire questions. Uh, you ready for a few? <laughs> All right, sure. Yeah, hit me. I would you rather play on an MLB team and never win a World Series, or be on a team that won but never played? Um, I'd rather play but never win. Good, good answer. Um, uh, it's it's a random weekend for uh the off season. Uh, what are your, you and your family doing for fun? For fun, uh, work out. I mean, we're we're a boring family. I'm telling you, like. My routine today has been I worked out at 8 a.m., got home at 9.30. I trained my wife until 11. I went and hit from 11 to, and filled it and threw from 11 to 2.30. I got home uh, 8 again, went in the garage, watched video, and hit off a tee with foam balls, got done, came inside. My daughter woke up from a nap. I played with her for like 30 minutes, and then I'm on the interview. That's all we do every day. Besides the Our, interview we're part. very boring. Yeah, that's that's it. That's we're right now. We would be just playing with my daughter, probably getting ready, like eating, kind of calming down, yeah. doing nothing. We're we're pretty boring, honestly. Um. So, what was your greatest baseball moment at FSU? Okay, so I've already said Omaha, so I'll say a different one. I hit in super regionals. I hit a homer from each side of the plate. I was four for four with three walks and hit a homer from left handed and right handed. How are you? Oh, wait. So you had like seven plate appearances? I had seven plate appearances. We won. We won like twenty-one to one. Whoa. So I had seven plate appearances. Whoa. Yeah. What team was against? What team? It was. was uh, it was Sam Houston State from Texas. Wow. They. Uh, it was the second game. We actually played them the first game, and they should have beat us, but somehow we ended up beating them in the ninth inning. We came back and won six to five. 
And then the next day we played, there was a rain out. So we started like four hours later and I led the game off with the opposite field home run lefty. And then I got like another base hit and then I hit a pull side homer righty and then walked three times and got a base hit in my last at bat. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's an incredible game. Yeah. I don't know if I'll ever have another game like that. Mm-hmm. Um. So Taylor, DC or Marvel? Uh, honestly, neither. Can I answer neither? Neither. I mean, sure. Like, what, what else? Wait, do you like? wait, like wait what did you say? D- DC? I, what is DC? Well, I'm like is Batman like, and Superman. Uh, I, I haven't watched any of those. I've watched Batman, actually, so I'll say DC. Okay. I don't watch, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'll watch some Marvel movies, but like, I have no clue who any of the characters are. I just like watch it for entertainment. Okay. Um, so we were in Toronto over 4th of July weekend uh, to see you guys play. Uh, do you like Toronto? Love Toronto. It's uh, That's a beautiful stadium, too, especially when they let the roof open so you can see the tower there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Toronto. Super clean. The The people there are amazing. Sp- the sports fans there, they they're like, they love their sports. It's awesome. Actually, uh, you, you definitely don't remember this, but uh, we, you were actually you actually walked past us while we were waiting in line on one of the games. Really? Yeah. We well, were... I was like walking to the stadium. Mm-hmm. Just walking in, and you were just. Man, you should have said, "Hey." We we did. <laughs> oh, I was pretty. I was probably locked in. Honestly, I probably had. Yeah, like, you AirPods you were wearing in. AirPods. You were you were listening yeah. to music probably. Pro- yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, so favorite MLB park to play in besides Tampa. Uh, I I I like Seattle, the Mariners. I really like the, their playing surface is great. It's awesome. And um, every time I've went and played there, the weather's been beautiful. It's been like cool, like really cool to the point to where when you're playing, you're perfect. If you're not playing, you just throw a light hoodie on. And then the day games there are always perfect temperature too. I just, I, something about Seattle I love. The hotels there really is really nice too. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have a go-to karaoke song? Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually not a, I, what is it? A, I'm, I'm, I stay away from karaoke. I don't know why. I don't like embarrassing myself. Um, and last one, everyone gets this question. What is your favorite baseball movie of all time? Um, I'm going to go with Bad News Bears. Okay. A valid answer. Um, yeah. So Taylor D- T-Dubs, Walls of the Tampa Bay Rays, everyone. Uh, we did it. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks, man. Y'all had some good questions, too. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. This was really cool, uh, even if you are a null. <laughs> uh, go, go Gators, by the way. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, nah, that's it. Go Knowles. Uh You can follow Taylor Walls uh, at T underscore dubs 10 on Instagram, and you can help my show by subscribing to Baseball Podcasts or Fun on Instagram or visiting my new website, baseballpodcastsorfun.com. Thank you so much, Liam, for helping out on the show, but please check in next week for a brand new episode. Until then, that was Taylor Walls. I am Grayson Knight, and this was Baseball Podcasts or Fun. Don't forget to swing for the fences. See ya.